All right, now we're going to do one last example where we just compare the exact same project with its CPM diagram and its PDM diagram. So first of all, let's do the PDM diagram. Uh, let's do a rough draft where we would have activity A. Uh, let's do it up here. So we know that we're going to have activity A as the first activity. Then B and C depend on A. They can't start until A is done. So we would have activity B and activity C. And then we would have activity D can start once B and C are both done. So it's going to come back down into activity D. And then activity E can happen once activity D is done. So let's redraw this uh, with our good copy of our PDM network diagram. So here we have our good copy where we were using this notation, the, the top middle, we have the activity name, the bottom middle square, we have the duration. So that's what I've already filled in here. We have activities A, B, C, D, E, just like this one, A, B, C, D, E. And then in the bottom middle, we have the durations that I read right off of this, uh, this table here. So we'd have A is five days, uh, B is three days and so on. So now what we have to do is we'll do our forward pass to calculate our early start and early finish. So the very beginning of the project starts at zero we add the duration, which is five days, to get five for the early finish. And then we bring the early finish to the early start of the next ones of its successors. So we bring the five up here and add three to get eight. Then we're gonna bring the five here. We're gonna add four to get nine. Now where two activities converge onto one, we have to, on the forward pass, we have to pick the larger value because activity D here depends on activity B and C. It can't start until activity B and C are both done. So if we started on the eighth day, activity C wouldn't be done yet. So we have to pick the ninth day. So we put the nine here and then we add two so we get 11 and then we bring the early finish again to the early start of the next one. So we bring the 11 over and 11 plus five is 16. Now we want to find the late start and the late finish, so we'll do that when the backwards pass. So we bring the early finish down on the last activity to the late finish and write it there. And then we just go through and we subtract the duration. So 16 minus 5 is 11. Now we bring the late start to the late finish of the preceding activity. So we have 11 and we subtract 2 and we get 9. So then we bring this 9 over. 9 minus 3 is 6. And now we can't go here yet because there'll be competing values. So we'll bring this nine back here from the late start of activity D to the late finish of activity C. So we have nine, nine minus four is five. Now on the backwards pass, when we have competing options, we take the smaller value, which is the opposite of the forward pass. So we can either bring in a six or we can bring in a five. So we will bring in the five. Five minus five is zero. And if you end on zero here, you know you've done it correctly. Now what we want to do is we will draw the CPM network diagram for this exact same project. So first of all, the first activity will be activity A as it has no predecessors, so we'll draw it just like this. Where we have the activity over the arrow instead of the activity being on the node like in the PDM network diagram, uh, and the activity goes from one node to another. So next up we have activities B and C both depending on A. So we can draw those coming out of this node where A ends. And then we have activity D, which depends on B and C. So activity D can't start until B and C are both done. So we need some point in time where they're both done. Well, what we can do is we can connect this node to here with a dummy, and then that will be our point in time where D is able to start. So now we have our activity D on this arrow, and it's coming out of this point in time where C is done, and also by extension with this dummy, B is done. So we've satisfied this predecessor requirement and we've also satisfied the fact that C and B will both have different IJ numbers that you'll see once we number the nodes. Okay, so lastly, we just have to put in activity E like that. And now let's go through and number the nodes so that every arrow goes from a lower number to a higher number. Now what we can do, if you want on a CPM network diagram, you can do the forward pass and the backwards pass as well. What we need to do is we have our, we have our activity name above the arrow, so we'll just put in our durations below the arrows. And now what we want to do is we'll do a very similar format here where on the left side of the activity name, we'll put the early start. And then on the right side, we'll put the early finish for our early pass. So first of all, activity A will start at point at time zero. It's five days long, so it will end at five. We're just doing this in blue because it gets a little hard to keep track on this type of diagram. Uh, now activity B, we bring this five over. So activity B starts on five, we add three, and it ends on eight. Um, activity C starts on 5, we add 4, and it ends on 9. And then when we come in to decide what the early start of activity D is, we have to consider 
the two competing options because there's two arrows coming into this point in time. So one of the options could be 9, which was the early finish of activity C. And the other option, 8, what you can do is you can just bring this here. And if you want, because this arrow has zero duration, sometimes I would write an 8 there and then an 8 there. Um, and then I'll look at this and I'll say, well, 9 and 8, well, it has to be the bigger one because D can't start until both of these are finished and the latest finish, or the, well, the early, these are the early finishes, but C finishes later than B. So we have to pick the 9 for the early start of activity D, come down, add 2. The early finish of D would be 11, bring the 11 over and add 5 and we get 16. Now we do a very similar process on the way back for the backwards pass. Uh, we'll bring the 16 down just like we did on the PDM network diagram and we'll have 16 minus 5 is 11. Bring the 11 over, we have 11 minus 2 is 9. And now we're going to bring this 9 to the late finish of all of these options. We'll have 9 here and we'll also, we can bring the 9 to this dummy if we want just to keep track. Uh, but we don't actually subtract anything so we would bring the 9 here and again bring the 9. You can obviously skip right to here if you don't want to but sometimes it helps to keep track. Uh, now we have 9 minus 4 is 5, and we had 9 minus 3, we're running out of space, but that would be 6, kind of in there. And then on the backwards pass, remember, we take the lowest of any competing values, so coming into the late finish of activity A, we can either choose this 5 or this 6, so we'll bring the 5, and 5 minus 5 is 0, and there we go. We ended on a 0, so we know we've done it correctly. Uh, personally, I, I, I don't like this method, but because it gets so messy. Um, but there you go. It is possible to do the forward and backwards pass while you're on a CPM network diagram. All right, so in the next video, I will see you there and we'll actually start talking about float or slack. Uh, float and slack is the same thing, um, but it's very important and I will see you guys there.